Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first major lesson of 8th grade social studies, where we are going to start to explore the concept of freedom, and specifically how it is the United States of America was born as a nation seeking out what the citizens of the United States viewed as their freedom. So our essential question for the entire unit that we are about to begin is quite simply, how did the United States of America gain its freedom? All of the notes you are going to take over the next couple of weeks are going to help to answer that essential question. But for this moment, I'm going to give you a moment to actually write that down as your EQ for this unit. So we have already learned the vocabulary list for this unit. So this is just a reminder. Um, you are going to be seeing and hearing these words used throughout the course of what you're going to be learning over the next couple of weeks. So you learned all those words ahead of time for a reason. And in this particular lesson, we are going to be talking about the word freedom itself, which, as you know, is the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Hindrance means someone trying to block you or stop you. They're trying to hinder you. So there's the picture we use to associate with freedom. Guys standing there. Sky's the limit. Nothing's holding him back. The next term we're going to hear a lot about is the economy. Also, you'll hear it used as economic activity, which has to do with the economy, which is quite simply the way a society organizes the manufacture and sale of things of value, such as goods and services. So buying, selling, making, and exchanging things all have to do with the economy. Next term we're going to talk about is rights. People like to talk about their rights. What exactly does that mean? We have a bill of rights. What exactly does that mean? Rights are powers and privileges that belong to the people and cannot be taken away. So if your rights are being trampled on, then someone's trying to take them away. Um, it's good to know what your rights are and what your rights are not. Next uh, word can be either a noun or a verb, petition. Um, you can sign a petition, which is if you get enough signatures, uh, the city council or the county or the state has to at least take your idea into consideration and tell you that they are adopting it or they have to tell you they're rejecting it and give you a reason why. And then the verb to petition, um, you can petition for a change in the rules. So, yeah, so at one point my students petitioned to allow me, have me to allow them to chew gum in class. And I said, you know what? It's not that big a deal. If you can handle it, I will accept that petition and let you chew gum. And I, I let that go. And then we have class. It's a multiple meaning word. You can say someone has no class or you can say, you know, what class is that in? Or I'm in first class. But uh, in this case, we're talking about social classes. And a class is a part of society that is defined by such qualities as wealth, occupation, and inherited titles or honors. Uh, in the United States of America, we tend to just refer to the upper class, the middle class, and the working class. We don't like to say lower class. We call it the working class. So if you're working for an hourly wage, you're in the working class. If you have a salary, you're probably in the middle class. And if you don't worry about whether you have a salary or not because you have wealth already, you're probably in the upper class. Um, it's a very simplistic way to look at it, but I can think of worse ways. So now let's get to the lesson. 
our essential question on the left side of the line for this lesson is going to simply be what is freedom if we're going to be learning about the concept of freedom it stands to reason we should talk about what that is and it might be wise for me to ask you what you think freedom is the dog agrees um, what do you think freedom is i'm about to tell you uh, how we're going to look at freedom in terms of this unit but you know there's a couple questions i might want to ask you to kind of zero in on the topic and uh, i'm gonna have you do some writing on this first question is uh, we often say america is a free country but when we say it's a free country what exactly are we talking about we're gonna have a conversation about that um, how do you personally define freedom? So what I think of as freedom might be completely different than what you think of as freedom. So you know, we're gonna have a conversation about that. Um, what are some different ways we can be free? Are there some different ways we can describe freedom that you can think about? Maybe you can think about some ways that I can't think about. Right now we got a dog who doesn't consider itself to be free outside my window. And uh, what are some ways we may not be free? You know, we say we live in a free country, but are there some ways that we aren't free? That might be an interesting conversation for us to have. And you know what? We're going to have that conversation today. I'm going to talk you through that. There are some different ways we can put categories of freedom into um you know ways we can describe so uh, a lot of times we talk about our economic freedoms that means um yeah we're free to make money we're free to get rich we're free to work whatever job we want we're not told what we have to do in that case we just know that we kind of need to survive uh, there's personal and lifestyle freedom, the ability to dress how you want, the ability to do what you want with your life, uh, the ability to be who you are freely. Um, and to what degree do we have those freedoms? Um, there's also religious freedom. Do you have the ability to practice your religion the way you want? Do you feel free to practice it that way? Um, do you feel that your beliefs are in any way hindered or repressed in our society? And, uh, you know, so to what degree do we have religious freedom and freedom to believe what we want to believe? Are there any limits on that? That would be an interesting conversation to have. And, of course, freedom of speech, the ability to say what you want to say and express what you want to express without the government coming in and telling you this is how you must express yourself so this is kind of a 35,000 foot overview of freedom um, in class in real time I'm gonna talk you through exactly what I want you to do with this but it's a good way to start the unit and uh, I'm looking forward to an interesting and dynamic conversation but with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off for the first time in eighth grade social studies here at Waldo Middle School. I hope we are about to begin a very dynamic conversation and we're starting to lean into a very dynamic semester here at Waldo Middle School.